So many of you will be more familiar with the term STEM. And the A that turns STEM into STEAM is art. And of course, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and maths. And art was added because it brings an element of creativity and design to the STEM process. So I know that sometimes STEAM can be seen as a little bit tricky. And sometimes we think as practitioners, we need to do kind of STEAM activities or a STEAM theme week or have STEAM as an exclusive part of the curriculum. But STEAM is an ethos that not only can enhance your curriculum, but can underpin your day-to-day -day teaching. I mean, there is some dissension around the fact that the A has been added to STEM, uh, that some people like the, the purest of the kind of STEM approach. And I think also, you know, all of us come to the world with a biography that's ours, which is from how we were parented, the kind of community we grew up in. And I really do feel that there are, I mean, there's way more work to be done, but there's a lot of challenges in society now against some of those preconceptions. I mean, I know I have a brother who's two years older than me. He was very good at the kind of the maths and the sciencey stuff and did really well with that. But even me growing up, and now that I'm 51, or 52 actually, and a child of the 60s, um, still lives with me the fact that I, there was a constant comparison of me and my brother, both at school, but and at home. So he was the academic one, and I was the arty one. And so therefore, the opportunities that we were presented with were those, you know, opportunities. So again, I think in education, that we as professionals, we need to constantly have that dialogue with ourselves that we recognize that we come into the profession as everybody does with preconceptions and that we actively challenge that. And that's our responsibility. Whatever subject it is, there's no reason why a child shouldn't have a passion for that subject. So I work with you know, the little children often. I will work with four-year-olds who will say things to me like, I hate writing or I hate maths. And you think, how can you hate anything you're for? You know, you've only, it's only been in the world of your sphere of knowledge for about two years. How can you say you hate it? And that's, that's a lot to do with how those things are wrapped up by adults who will also say, oh, I'm rubbish at maths, or I'm terrible at maths. And actually, no, you're probably not terrible at maths at all. It's just that idea that if we can instill in children this concept of don't tell me that I can't do that because actually I can if I want to. And that kind of passion and desire, and that's when we're kind of unlocking lots of keys that enable them to be the best at lots of different things. Even with the very youngest children, it's about sowing that seed of passion. But also a lot of what we do with children, especially in the primary curriculum and in secondary, is not that relevant to who they are in their day to day lives. So even when we're talking about early years education, I talk a lot about, you know, the things that you're doing when you're working with children, the knowledge you're trying to impart to those children, it's about making that knowledge relevant to them in the moment. So how many four-year-olds are really that interested in sitting down and practicing writing their name? Probably not a lot. I think also it's value in the why. So, you know, again, little children, he'll do that thing and go, why, why, why? Yeah. It's really annoying, but actually in the why are the seeds of that kind of STEAM approach. Or, you know, classically, you know, if you're teaching in early years and you're talking about something fascinating like 2D shapes and a hand will go up in the carpet and somebody will say something completely random like, my dog is dead, or I, you know, I'm having chicken nuggets for my tea. Or once somebody put a hand up and said, do chickens have belly buttons? And it came completely out of nowhere. And what I well, what I want teachers to do is to go, do you know what? We were talking about 2D shapes, but actually, do chickens have belly buttons? Oh, I don't know. How are we going to find out? But we're really conditioned in the profession to go, we're not talking about that now, are we? We're not talking about chickens now. I'm talking about a shape that's got three sides. So I think partly as well, it's the culture in education of giving educators permission to really explore the why because if we want curious learners that really want to know if chickens do have belly buttons and if they don't why not they that's a stem principle for me that's not about a raspberry pi it's not about a bit of technology that's about saying right let's see how we can find out if chickens have belly buttons or not because in truth even as an educator in that role as being an educator you are learning so much about I mean there's exchange of knowledge but also you learn about people you learn about what motivates so it is absolutely a kind of a composite learning rather than that kind of really binary view of I am the teacher and you are the learner and therefore there is that kind of separation 
But I think it's that flexibility. It's that idea. We're coming back to the kind of the relevance of a STEAM curriculum or a STEAM experience. And that if you can say, this is the core knowledge, but we can wrap that knowledge in things that interest you, because how you would then interpret that knowledge is where you get your motivation from. That's the key. And I think also from my point of view, having been in this game for quite a long time, when you are having a curriculum that's based around, or a learning experience that's based around children's passions, desires, and individuality, you will achieve those kind of end results that have been set by somebody in the government somewhere and you'll achieve them with bells on because that's not your ultimate destination your ultimate destination is making the best learner that you can make 